get that thing with these movies sometimes you go you think oh it'll never it'll never go get old and then you're watching oh my god i've spotted something that's it's kind of it's showing its age but this i don't I, the thing never seems to show its age to me The film that's kind of influenced me a lot would be um, Dawn of the Dead, the Romero Dawn of the Dead. I think that that is a kind of a perfect film in many ways. I go back to it a lot. Romero's smart in that way of like, you know, the film has got lots of different compartments. So there's like the, they've got kind of comedy in it and it's got action in it. And then it's a siege movie and then it's a kind of police procedural thing at the beginning. But it's also a satire as well, you know, and then he's found a very, he's found an original and sly way of talking about consumerism, which is super fresh in that movie. Now, now it's become kind of more of a cliche as time goes on. But when, you know, when that movie was made, it's like no one was talking about things like that. The sequence I like the most is the taking over of the supermarket itself, of the of the mall, you know. And why I like it is kind of because it gives you an incredible sense of space. You know exactly what's going on, but it's also kind of like silent cinema as well. So you you they establish every area, and it's exciting, um, and it makes sense, which is something that's quite rare in cinema these days. I mean, it, and it, it it shares that with like something like Seven Samurai, I think, in terms of like you go oh. I know, I understand what this village is and the shape of it and where all the people are going to come in and how the attack is going to work and all this kind of stuff. And this is similar with that where you just go, oh, right, this is, the, the environment now is um, a character within the, within the film itself. So Evil Dead 2 is a film that, uh, the Sam Raimi film, which I saw when I was at school and I bunked off school and I went to see any film randomly in the cinema. And I went to see that accidentally on my own in an empty cinema at four o'clock in the afternoon or something. So anyway, I saw Evil Dead 2 and it was so incredible. I just went, went back to school and then took all my friends to see it the next day. Oh, Evil Dead 2 is probably when they stamp on the um, the lid of the fruit cellar and the eye comes out and flies across the room into, into the uh, woman's screaming mouth. Yeah, I think I was going to pass out. I was laughing so hard at that. I came to that quite late, I think, because it was a video nasty and it had been banned everywhere. It was quite hard to get hold of when I was a kid. But I had no expectation of what it was when I watched it. I thought I thought it was going to be more like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which is quite a lot of chainsaws and people running around with chainsaws. But it's quite a, a well-considered, well, it is. I mean, it's a beautifully made film. And one of the things that how, how Texas Chainsaw Massacre works, I think, is that the, the drip, drip, drip of uncanny imagery throughout it. So it, it's always got time to look in the corner of a room and see a spider or something or, or kind of see a weird, something made out of bones or a chicken standing on a skull or something. And, and, and that just is so oppressive all the way through the movie that um, started to understand that like design could be a thing that would terrify you even more than seeing graphic stuff. And, it, and in a way, there's not really that much graphic content in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's kind of reserved, but at the same time, is much more terrifying than things that graphically show you horror. Um, I think it's the moment when Leatherface hits the guy on the head and then slams down the steel shutter. So violent, and it, but it's really wide. It's like you see it from miles away, and it. But why is that so terrifying? Where you know something close up of some grisly bit of prosthetic arm being chopped off, you just go there. Yeah. It's kind of not really strictly a horror film, but it is a film that's full of horror, which is um, uh, Come and See, the Ilham Klimov film um, about the Germans and the Russians fighting the Germans in um, Belarus. It's one of the most terrifying films I've ever seen. And I kind of 
I remember I, I had bought it and I, I it sat on the shelf for like five years. I was too scared to watch it. And then I started watching it one night at like 11 o'clock. And then I had to watch the whole thing all the way through and, and just sat there just completely stunned. Yeah, at the end of it, it's, it's an incredible film. I think well, there's lots of stuff in it. And out of context, it won't really sound like much, but there's a scene where they're gone back to the main character's house and they're, but the, the stove is still on and his family have obviously just eaten a meal, but they can't see them and but they're not there. And then they leave. And as you as they leave, the girl he's with just looks around and sees all their bodies up against the wall have all been shot. He, he misses it. He doesn't look and she just doesn't say anything because, you know, it's too it's too unbelievably horrible. But that's just, a you know, it's just absolutely harrowing. <laughs> the whole film is harrowing. You know? I think on the kind of cheerier end of the register of ent- the entertainment end of the register, it'd have to be something like John Carpenter's The Thing, which is just endlessly entertaining. And I've watched it a, a million times and um, we'll keep watching it. You know, it's a film I go back to a lot. And just because of the, you know, this, it's the perfect setup of it. It's the the prosthetics, which are all just absolutely genius and don't seem to ever age. You get that thing with these movies. Sometimes you go, you think, oh, it'll never, it'll never go get old. And then you're watching, oh my God, I've spotted something that's it's kind of it's showing its age. But this, I don't, I, the thing never seems to show its age to me at all. Yeah, it's when the, when the head drops on the ground and comes <laughs> onto the spider, you can't, go, you don't get better than that. And just, I still don't understand how they did the effects. I mean, I kind of know, but it, it doesn't, it shouldn't work as well as it works. And it's just un, unbelievable. But there's the Rob Bottin kind of spent like two years making the effects for the thing, apparently. And, you know, it, it, it shows. It's, I don't think there's ever going to be another movie could afford to do the practical effects as good as that ever again. You know?